The governor of the state of North Carolina, Governor Roy Cooper, signed Executive Order Number 246, which set the guidance of the state selling 50% zero emission vehicles by 2030. I was going over the documentation, it was about two or three months ago, uh, just to see what there was to see, because you can't really force people to buy a certain type of car. And what I found was a couple of graphs done by consulting companies that were to predict electric vehicle adoption rates, as well as um, what that would look like should it occur for the automotive uh, population at large. And I just want to go over that very quickly um, because it's some time has transpired and um, this S-curve has been around a long time. This is what was provided to the state of North Carolina by a consulting company looking at electric vehicle, likely electric vehicle adoption rates. And uh, the goal of 2030, 50%, is where Governor Cooper was directing his policymakers to aim for. And in order to get there, um, these are actual numbers. So these numbers up here are not a part of the government website. These are pulled from uh, public sources. Uh, the first four here are actual numbers of EV sales. The fifth one is an estimate from WT Brown Consulting uh, for 2024, which is currently estimating 1.75 million <clears throat> EVs being sold in 2024, which constitutes a 9.8% uh, market share. So if you look here at 2020, um, there was a 1.9 actual, and this graph is a little bit higher than that. Uh, 2021 is a 3.8% actual. Uh, that's pretty close because it's below 5, so that's pretty close. Uh, 2022 was a 5.7% actual, and if you look here, that dot is pretty close. Uh, 2023, 6.9% actual. Again, very close. And then the 9.8% um, forecasted for 2024 is spot on. So, in a government sourced data set, um, these plots are accurate, which stands to reason that the rest of this curve uh, is likely accurate. And you'll see this, this S curve, you'll see this S curve adoption rate. It's used um, many places uh, throughout the internet, but this is a government website used for planning purposes. And what they're trying to do is estimate, okay, so if there's this number of EVs within the state's automobile population, what do we as a state need to plan for? And that's where this second graph comes in. So if we benched at 2030 with a 50%, which would be right here, that would mean this many EVs would actually be on the road compared to other, because, you know, cars have a certain life cycle, 12 years or whatever it is. And then by 2050, um, you know, the state's growing, so the population will increase and whatnot. But by 2050, basically half the cars will be 50, or so or mid-2049 is actually what this is saying. Mid-2049, half the cars on the road will be EVs. Now, these are government planners doing long-term um, planning for public infrastructure. And this is the graph that they're using to make these decisions. Now, there's a lot of arguments saying that EVs are going to plateau and then they'll just kind of stay down here about 10 or 20 percent and that'll be that. That's not equating what all these other factors are mentioning that the cost of EVs are coming down, meaning the adoption rate is going to start to increase. And this Tony Seba cost curve has been mentioned too many times to count now, but it's very predictable what's going to happen. And it looks just like this. It's an S-curve. And um, this is not a fanatical um, 
group that's coming up with this EV adoption rate. This is the state of North Carolina's planning for public infrastructure. And these five data points are reality, which stands to reason if those five are reality, just look at the damn curve. Um, by 2027, we'll be at a 25% adoption rate. By 2030, we will be above a 50% adoption rate. And, you know, game's over. So if you're early on in EVs and you think this is just a trend and it's going to fade because there's been a lot of bad press um, circulated as of late, and I could argue what those sources may be. The truth is this is, this is, a, um, this is a nationwide shift on the powertrain of personal transportation for light-duty vehicles. And there's really no stopping it. The, the mechanics are already in place. Unless there's World War III, Armageddon, something silly like that, um, the United States will have EVs as a majority in, let's see, um, the, ha the second half or June of 2029, which is, what, five or six years away at... Um, this time next year will be over 10%. In um, 2026, we'll be at 20%, 2027, 25%, so on and so forth. So I don't think if you're a new EV owner, you have to think that you have should have buyer's remorse because you've purchased something that's going to be fading away from existence. It's actually the opposite. If you buy an internal combustion engine car, according to this graph, you'll be in the minority um, sometime in the not too distant future. And um, I'm 55, so I'm likely not going to see these 2050 numbers or whatever, but I am seeing the onset of the cost curve taking hold, and the inevitability of it is really unquestionable in my mind. So put your mind at ease. If you purchased an EV, you're on the cusp of a leading edge of overall transportation uh, transition. Anyway, thanks for watching.